Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog video. Today we're talking about what's new in Reaper 6.44, 6.45, and 6.46. And if you hear any background noise in this video, there is construction literally right outside and uh, that's kind of unavoidable. So we're gonna start off with some changes in 6.44. For macOS, add per theme option to not use themed window colors when in dark mode enabled by default theme. So if we are in the Reaper default theme and we have this new option unchecked, your windows will look like this. They will have sort of an in-between light and dark mode. There will be various areas where there's bright colors where there shouldn't be. In this update, they automatically check this box, do not use window theming on macOS dark mode. So I've opened up the theme development tweak window, which you can find in the action list, filtered for dark, and it's this option right at the top. If I enable that, not all windows will update automatically. So I'll just load uh, different screen sets to load that change. And you can see the difference there. So if it's unchecked, it looks like this. If it's checked, it looks like this. Dark menu backgrounds, light text, and most areas will be fully um, dark mode enabled. If we switch to another theme, let's take the default five theme. This one will automatically have that enabled. And if I go to my, let's just take this one, work in progress one. This one is not using it and I'll reload the stuff. And you can see that there's the light backgrounds in the list sections. And if I check this box, then these, will have a dark background. They won't use the theme colors for these different sections. So it's up to you. If you're making a custom theme or if you wanna tweak the existing themes, this is one of the new options that you can use. And once you make that change, don't forget to save that as a new theme. Also for macOS, improved performance of live effects multiprocessing, especially on M1 systems. And this is a change that I can't say that I've really seen a difference with. I think this is going to be an ongoing change as more people are switching to the M1 systems and as more companies are coming on board supporting the M1 architecture with their plugins and hardware and everything. Probably these changes will be most noticeable in the universal build. Uh, in the previous video, I talked about the different versions of Reaper. You can have the Intel or the universal builds on Mac and you can have the universal even if you have an Intel Mac. My own systems, I stick with the Intel build because most of my plugins from third parties are Intel only right now. Hopefully this year will be the time that I switch. A couple of versions back, we talked about changes to the item notes window. 6.44 also has some changes for that. Add option to close the item notes window on enter key and save item notes when closing item notes window via action. Putting in a item here and I will add in an item note with a shortcut, which I have on F8. So I can type in a note like this is a note. And below the text area is a new option to use the enter key to close or shift enter for a new line. So I have that enabled. I can press shift enter and then type in uh, second line and third line. And I'm gonna hit enter to apply these changes and close the window. And now if I hover my mouse over this item, you can see this is a note, second line, third line, those notes are there. If I press F8 on this, I can change this, I can delete it and type in new note and then press F8 again. That will close that. And if I hover over this, you can see that that item note has changed. It's automatically saved. So this is a big workflow improvement. You don't have to always use the mouse to open and close this window or to apply your, your settings, you can type and it's just a much more fluid process. This is also reverting one of the changes in a way. So it used to be that when you pressed enter, it would automatically save and close. And now they're adding the option of adding multiple lines and not really taking any anything away. You have it either way, depending on how you wanna have that option. Next up, we have some changes for normalizing items. The change log says media items add support for various loudness measurements, LUFS, et cetera, when normalizing media items. When normalizing multiple items to an integrated loudness value, support either normalizing each item separately or normalizing the combined sequential output of all items. 
And this somewhat overlaps with some of the loudness features that were already included with the SWS extension. Um, but I think this takes it even further and it is integrated in a very nice way. So I'm gonna select a bunch of these items and then I'll double click on one of them. And if I hit this normalize button here, we get this new window. So we have the option to normalize to a peak, LUFS integrated, RMS integrated, true peak, LUFS momentary max, and LUFS short-term max. With a decibel value, we can normalize each item separately, normalize items together with a common gain. So it looks like these are pretty loud items. Let's just do peak minus six, and it looks like that. Let's do uh, LUFS integrated together to minus 23 LU. And so they're maintaining the same relative volumes that they were before, but the overall output has been uh, addressed to hit that minus 23 LUFS target. Let's do LUFS M max of minus 14, each item separately, and that looks like that. So each item processed separately to hit that minus 14 momentary value. Let's also look at that in the action list. So we can get to these actions by searching for normalize. And if you don't have scripts or SWS, you know, this is what you will come up with the word normalize. Normalize items, this will bring up that window like we saw before. Some of these options in the action list are older. Normalizing to zero dB peak has been in there for a really long time. Moving on to changes in the MIDI editor, there's actually just one I want to showcase here. Add action to insert note at edit cursor without advancing. So this sounds really simple. This is a new action in the action list, of course. Insert note at edit cursor, no advance edit cursor. I've got the insert note at edit cursor assigned to the insert key, and now I'm going to insert um, at the edit cursor using the letter I, and I'm just kind of choosing something at random here, just to have two different buttons for it. So I parked my edit cursor at bar 14. I think the C2 was the last one I clicked, and I'm gonna press the insert key. And as I do that, you can see that the edit cursor position has changed. I put in those notes, and now it's at bar 14, beat three. So now I'll click in bar 14 on C3, and if I press I, that's going to put in the note, but not move the position, which means that I can create chords now. So I'll, I'll go up a couple notes using my arrow keys and then press I again, and that will insert keys. And then I will press it again, and that puts in another note. So if you want to insert without having to move the cursor, this is a great way of doing that. Uh, I'm actually surprised that I never noticed that there wasn't that function there before. Um, and also that it wasn't there before. Up next is a change for re-EQ. They've added parallel bandpass filter mode. Uh, this came out back in January and I actually didn't even hear anything about it. I didn't see anyone talking about it and I had totally missed it in the change log. And this is one of the main reasons we're coming back to this topic uh, so long after. Let's start off with removing all the bands here. I'm gonna take that first band I'm gonna turn this into a normal bandpass filter. So bandpass filter looks like this. It passes just this range of frequencies. So I have this at 1200 Hertz and it's only passing a range based on the bandwidth. And so here's how it sounds on this waterfall sound effect. Right, it's kind of like a solo effect for a certain frequency range. If we switch it over to the new parallel bandpass mode, it actually is going to sound exactly the same. And it sounds the same because there's only one bandpass effect in here. If we change this to two bandpasses, that's where we're going to hear a difference. So I'm gonna add in a second point by just double clicking. I'm gonna right click it and change this to bandpass. So two bandpass filters. And you can see from the shape of the filter, this green line, this is what's being taken away from this sound now, pretty much everything. So I've got one bandpass at about 5,000 Hertz and another one at 135 Hertz. There's audio there, but it's very quiet. 
let's take both of these bandpasses and change them to parallel bandpass filters. Now, that filter curve is totally different and they're both in parallel. We're going to have each of these bandpass filters process the signal independently and then mix together at the output. And we can still adjust them. Essentially, all of the processing in re-EQ is done in series until you add in multiple parallel bandpass filters. And at that point, it splits the signal into multiple paths before merging them together at the output, which um, allows you to have multiple soloed frequencies using the bandpass filters. This is pretty cool, and you can get some interesting results if you take multiple of these and link them together. Okay, so I've just linked three of these bandpass filters together using the parameter modulation uh, band linking controls. And so if I change the frequency of band one, that will also affect the frequencies at bands two and three. Let's make these really tight. So there's a neat thing that you can do with the parallel bandpass filters. In the Reaper 6.45 update, mostly it was just some normalization bugs. They added those new normalization features and just refined it and quickly released that 6.45 update. Moving on to 6.46, there were several bug fixes. One of those of note is for control surfaces, fix OSC control of effects wet dry knob. I'm not sure what happened, but with OSC, if, if you had that link to a wet dry knob, that was somehow broken. Uh, so you can use touch OSC and other OSC devices with wet dry knobs on plugins now. For media items, add action to normalize items to common gain or separately using most recent settings. And show warning or error depending on context when some items could not be normalized. So that'll go back to what we looked at a little bit earlier. So if we search for normalize recent, there are several actions here which saves you time if you're frequently normalizing to the same value over and over, and you don't have to have that window pop up every single time and click the button. That also means that you can use any of those normalized actions within custom actions for better workflow. Another change in 6.46, going back to the first thing we looked at, improve appearance of routing matrix in dark mode and default theme. Here again, if we uncheck this option, do not use window theming on Mac OS dark mode. This affects the routing matrix by quite a lot, as well as the action list. And so checking that, that just really unifies the whole look a lot better. And again, you may have to actually open and close windows before uh, you see that change fully take effect. And the last change I'll mention for 6.46, for MIDI, add actions to reload track support data, bank, program files, notation, etc. for individual MIDI items or all items in project. This is actually something that came up from the Reticulate developer, which is an extension for MIDI program changes to control virtual instruments, that sort of thing. The bug that they were fixing here was that it would just say PC on the MIDI items and not give any real information. A lot of times, if we search the action list in the main view, we have the action reload track support data for all MIDI items on selected tracks. And if we switch over to the MIDI editor action list, we've got reload track support data for the selected item that is loaded in the MIDI editor. So yeah, if you're using Reticulate and you have MIDI program changes, that you want to see in the arrange view as you make the changes, you can hit this action. And that's it for the previous three updates of Reaper. Thank you so much for watching. If you've missed any of the previous update videos, there's a link to the playlist down below and at the end card. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. 